Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Lane, co-president of the Accounting and Business Club. Good evening, everyone. My name is Connor Reagan. I'm also co-president. Um, we would like to welcome you to the Spring Business Lecture Series in partnership with the Department of Athletics. Uh, this evening, we will be hearing from Christopher, Christopher Cordaro. Mr. Cordaro is a graduate from Chestnut Hill College with a bachelor's in business administration. Christopher is currently vice president of, at EB Realty Management Corporation. EB Realty Management is a community real estate development firm with a focused vision of new urbanism, transformation, and inclusiveness. We would like to extend a thank you to Mr. Cordara for taking the time to speak with us about his journey. The title of Mr. Cordara's speech is Lessons Learned. As students at Chestnut Hill and young leaders today, I believe we can take away many key points from our very own alumni. So please welcome Christopher Cordara. All right. How's everyone doing today? So who am I, why am I here, and what do I hope to achieve? Um, first, as, as, as I was introduced, Christopher Cordaro. Um, I am an alumni here, graduate 2010. Um, also a legacy. Both uh, my grandmother and my mother went here. Uh, so uh, growing up, Chestnut Hill College uh, was something that was always a part of what could be possible for me in the future. Um, so when I was asked to speak to you today, I had to think about, okay, what, what, what do I want to do here? And how do I want to spend my time so that you can help or hopefully absorb something useful and, and bring it on to the next chapter of your life, whether it's tomorrow, next week, next year, you know, next 10 years. So what, what I decided to do is uh, give you a couple short stories about my life and experiences that I've, I've had and lessons that I've learned through them and uh, something that I often reflect on um, and try to learn from and do better in the future. So hopefully uh, that's something at the end of it, you can say, okay, yeah, um, I at least took three or four things out of there that I can stick in my back pocket and go back uh, and use it as you, uh, as you grow and you know, create your path to success. Um, so first, kind of a little bit about me. Um, as mentioned, I'm Vice President of EB Realty Management Corp. It's a small family-owned firm, um, probably mid-size for Philadelphia-specific real estate development firm. We also manage and um, uh, deal in finance, uh, but it's commercial based and all the assets that we own are in Philadelphia specific. Um, buildings uh, such as the Philadelphia Metropolitan Opera House, if you're familiar with that venue, North Broad, or the Divine Lorraine, Loft 640 with Osteria, James Beard Award winning restaurant, um, mural lofts, the Studebaker building, Abbott Square, Marine Club, and the list goes on. Um, but my, my role in, in the company is vice president. And so you think, okay, real estate, development, management, that's a pretty narrow you know, window of, of role. Like, you know, that you're dealing with buildings and that's it. But as a, as a vice president of a company, it's everything, right? It's a corporation. There's HR, there's finance, there's um, project management, which translates to any, any job. You know, project management is, is something that I actually got my um, postgraduate um, certification after my MBA in. And the fundamentals of project management is just something that is invaluable. So if anyone has an interest in that, I encourage you to you know, take a few pieces of, of what you look up and, and keep it with you. Um, so as a real estate developer it, and also a vice president of a company, um, specifically in Philadelphia, I have an opportunity to play a role in community, community development, in city government, 
any interactions between the community and the government and the neighborhoods. Um, you know, and also to curate the company that I'm a part of. Um, so in, in the role that I'm in and in the industry that I'm in, um, I'm very fulfilled in my in my day-to-day -day activities. And I think that that's an important part of your mindfulness of, of your day-to-day -day goals and purpose, right? You wanna be able to set goals and have a purpose to your uh, you know, your path uh, to success if, um, if you're gonna be happy in life. So um, I think that I've done that for myself and uh, I encourage you to do that as well. So the first story is a little bit about that path for me. Um, and everyone's path is different, right? Everyone's going to have a nonlinear, um, you know, success is not a straight line. You know, it's all based on experiences. So for, for me, I, I knew that I liked real estate in, at a young age um, because, you know, it's a tangible thing. You get to engage with people and it is multifaceted across finance, across sales, you know, marketing, every aspect of what you're learning in school, you would be utilizing it in the real estate world. Um, so high school, uh, I started working for a developer and construction, I was a painter, right? Just to understand a little bit about what this world is all about. Uh, graduated from high school and didn't go straight to college. I actually went to um, a community college, so I didn't go to college, but I didn't come here first. Uh, I went to Harrisburg Area Community College to take the courses necessary to get my real estate license and wanted to just jump right into the workforce, sell real estate, and understand that dynamic. Um, I stayed at Harrisburg Area Community College enough to get an associate's degree, because it was just a few more classes, why not? A um, Couple years into that, I determined sales and that retail back and forth just wasn't for me. It was a great learning experience and I will always keep that with me. But I kept thinking back to high school and my experiences with the developer who I was doing construction for. So I, I pivoted a little bit to say, hey, can I go and work for you again? You know, I, I ended up going back to that same developer. Um, and instead of just being a painter this time, I started running his construction crews and then getting more into the business side of things, um, <coughs> leading his teams on asset acquisitions, uh, office management, tax structure, um, and just kind of getting the base of knowledge as far as I could to understand what it takes to both be a developer and also how they are connected to different industries across um, you know, the whole platform. Um, 2008 hit, right? So I'm, that means I'm old. <laughs> um, 2008 hit and real estate market just crashed. Uh, and that was my cue to say, okay, I have an associate's degree. I have this great base of knowledge I know some of the things that I like. There are a few things that I don't know yet, and I know I need to know them. Uh, I'm gonna take the opportunity to further my education, and that's when I came to Chestnut Hill College. Um, during that time period, I also had to pay for college, so I worked. Um, I actually worked at the Chestnut Hill Grill right down the street. I was a bartender there, and I was a bartender there for six years on and off throughout the next six years of my life. Um, but I completed my uh, bachelor's here. Um, I was also on Phi Beta Lambda. I'm not sure if that's still here, no? Okay, it was, it was a business debate team, and competition team, and we actually competed against other colleges nationally. Um, and it, it was a pretty exciting thing, but one first place, multiple competitions. Um, and, you know, experiences like that here are why I come back. You know, I'm, I'm also a part of a fundraising team here and uh, often uh, attend the alumni galas. Uh, so coming back here and kind of giving back is part of the reason why 
Um, you know, I do. I, I know I found value in my experiences here, and I hope that you do as well. And in the next 20 years, you'll come back and you'll be here too. Um, so where, where was I? Kind of got sidetracked. Uh, the the uh, straight line in my path, and I was at bartending. Okay. Um, so I, as I finished school and bartending, um, you know, really the next step for me was I wanted to take my educational career to the next level, to where I needed to be in the professional atmosphere. So I needed to get my MBA. I went to Arcadia University for my MBA in um, international business. It was actually an international uh, experience, uh, you know, a degree where I studied in um, here, but also in Italy and um, in Romania as well. The Italian portion of, of my coursework was in the study of developed markets and multinational corporations. And the Romanian part was uh, the study of emerging markets and economic conditions around, uh, you know, it was more of a macro uh, you know, perspective on how businesses operate in an emerging market. Um, so all just great experiences, like I'm, I'm in Philly now and that's it. You know, I'm not gonna go to Romania and be like, hey, you wanna do a real estate deal. But still, you know, those types of interactions are something that you know, I might meet a Romanian in Philadelphia and just the tiny little piece, piece of knowledge is gonna be just invaluable. Um, so I was bartending still at that point during my MBA, but also um, I knew that I needed to do something different more in the industry. So I scoured my contact lists and all the professionals that I knew that uh, could help along the way. I mean, finding a mentor is super important. Um, and I, I was able to connect with uh, one of my old neighbors who gave me an opportunity to work under him. Uh, he was, had owned a consulting firm and um, I ended up working as an associate through his firm, uh, essentially managing, consulting on, and um, doing various administrative work for municipalities and also developers managing federal funds that came down from uh, the national level to the municipal level to the project level. So this experience was extremely invaluable because I got to see the, you know, from painting the high school, you know, window ledges and things like that all the way to okay, we have federal funds coming down to the state that goes to the city, that goes to the individual project, and then the management and compliance of it all the way up. So I just went from, you know, all the way up the ladder, and having that perspective is just huge, to be able to understand how it all works. So that said, that was kind of a long way of saying that a non-traditional path is okay and everyone's path is going to be different and the way that you set your path uh, is in a lot of cases you know first you have to get over a fear aspect right because fear is rooted in uncertainty you don't know and if you just ask yourself well, what's the worst that could happen right well then you start to understand the consequences and if you understand the consequences well, then you then can open yourself up to possibilities and opportunities. So it's a long way of saying, just don't be afraid, but do research and understand what you could, what the pitfalls would be and what the opportunities um, could be as well. Um, so at a, at a point in my life um, where I was already successful and I, kind of had a back and forth conversation with one of, with someone I was mentoring, and they asked me, well, what would you do differently, right? Because it's, you're, if you're looking back and it's all about experiences, you know, what would you do differently looking back? I said, absolutely nothing. You know, it's all about the journey, and it's about who I am now. I would not be because 
of those experiences. You know, so it's really the, the journey is more important than the goal that's celebrated at the end of the day. Um, so I have, a, I have a quote from a philosopher, Kierkegaard. Um, One can only understand life backwards, but you must live it forward, right? So it's just something to hold on to. Um, my, I guess I got a next, a next story. It's my, my first real estate deal. And it did not go well. Um, first real estate deal, I was, uh, actually I was in high school. I was in high school working for that developer and I was gung-ho and I wanted to jump in and be like, okay, I have all of this time and effort that I, you know, energy that I wanna put into this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this real estate deal and I looked up a couple structures and like, okay, how can I use the little bit of money that I had, which was my college fund, the reason why I was a bartender. Um, and how can I leverage this to, you know, have a successful deal and do it over again and again and again, and, you know, like all the infomercials that you see. It's not that easy. <laughs> so I, I ended up uh, trying to put together a purchase option short sale flip. So essentially, I put an option to buy something, I don't own it, but I'll go into contract for it. Um, the person that was selling it was in not a great financial position, so I was trying to negotiate with the bank for a lower pay down amount from what they owed so I could actually buy it for a lesser amount and then sell it, or actually do construction on the property and then sell it all within a very small window of time frame. Uh, the seller ended up filing for bankruptcy in the middle of the process, which nullified any of my rights um, throughout the process. So I lost my college fund. Um, so you say, well, Chris, you just totally, you know, you can use some expletives, but I'm not going to do. Um, you know, why, do you, why did you still pursue real estate? And you know, the, uh, anyone else can think about, okay, this horrible situation, you just lost everything. And most of the time you find that you'll find success and failure. And failure is a part of everyone's life. If you are able to take a look at yourself in the process of what you're doing and say, okay, did I do the best that I can and did I learn from the experience, then you have not failed, right? The situation just didn't work out the way you intended to, but you have a lesson learned and that experience that you can look back on and take it and do better the next time or do it in a different way or have more information to make a better decision. So the little lesson learned out of that experience is, you know, failure is not something to be afraid of fear aspect again. It's something to learn from and use as a tool, as a part of that path to success. Uh, the next little piece I have is not necessarily a story, but kind of a, a piece of all of the stories and a tool to help set that path, right? Um, little acronym OKR. Uh, objectives and key results. It's, it's a goal setting technique that's often used in the tech industry because it's very specific and data driven, right? You have to have key metrics and okay, how do you track your success? Um, and if you remember the, you know, the very first sentence that I used when I spoke to you here was who am I? What do I hope to achieve here? And or how am I gonna do it? And what do I hope to, that you know, you're gonna get out of it. And that's, that's really what it is. It's the, it's the why, it's the objective, and how you measure the results at the end of it. Um, the why should be personal. This is, this is your purpose. You know, why, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Why are you setting the goals that you're setting? And how do they fit into your life to give you purpose? 
right? The, you know, the objectives are how do you do it, right? And, and that's, that's the path, that's the, okay, the you know, failed real estate deal, the bartending experience that, by the way, um, all bartenders are the best at talking to anybody and they can just go on forever. Um, that, that experience alone, I feel like I can talk to the world. So, uh, if, you know, if you know anybody who just is, is a bartender and that, that somehow looked down upon, I would not, not take that viewpoint at all. It was an invaluable experience. Um, and then the key results is, you know, how do we look back on it? But that look back should always be full circle to the why, right? It should, the, the key result should always circle back to your personal beliefs and who, how it makes you who you are. Um, and that can translate to both your personal uh, you know, relationship with yourself or also in business. You know, it is a business tool, you know, maybe something that you've learned in class already or you will in your MBA, um, but you can use it in your day-to-day -day life and you can use it as a part of a look back on yourself to say, okay, is my path meaningful to me? Is this what I intended? Is this the direction that I want to go in? And then you can pivot and have your non-linear path to success as you go and look back on, on, your, on your life in a, in a meaningful way. Um, I do have one more story with the lesson and, uh, and then we can get to some Q and A's because I know we, we have to leave for um, other sports related stuff. Um, so it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting story that, and the lesson is something that I use today every day. Um, so going back to my nonlinear path of success, um, I was working for uh, my old neighbor consulting firm, and um, it got to a point where I didn't want to travel to Baltimore and Long Island, you know, or, and Manhattan and Patterson and Passaic and, you know, be in a different office and be in a different ecosystem of people every single day. Great experience. But I didn't sleep at all, and I put you know probably twenty thousand miles a month on my car. You know it's not great, it's not a good life work life balance uh, situation. So pivot, understand the why, personal, and change the objectives. So I wanted to stay in Philadelphia. It's where I've lived since I moved here uh, to go to college here, and um, through my sphere of influence and networks and people that I knew. Um, one of, of my friends, I had another friend um, who was a real estate developer in Philadelphia that I knew well, I knew his portfolio well. I knew what he was planning on doing and I took the opportunity to ask him for a job. And he said, no, okay, All right. And he said, sorry, I don't have an opportunity for you or a small firm. Um, and you know, maybe I'll look, I'll look first, you know, look at other my references and I'll give you, you know, some suggestions. So I kept going back to him and I said, you know what, I really think that this is exactly what you need in your firm. You, know, you need me. Because he was doing it all. It was a small, small company. It's still a small company. Um, our company is me, the president, a financial controller, and a bookkeeper in a main office and then we third party contract everything else out. So it's you know, kind of a uh, ultimate control and you don't really have many people to answer to. We can pivot very fast. Finally, I got to a conversation with um, my now, now boss and I, and I said, listen, I know what you're gonna say. He said, no, but I tell you what, let's try this. I'm gonna work for you for six months for free. And at the end of that six months, if you don't think that I find, you find value in what I've added here, and you know, you'd still a no, 
no harm, no foul. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I won't bother you anymore. Uh, we'll, we'll know. And, you know, but, but I, I would still appreciate the opportunity. Uh, if, if you do find value in what I brought, then we'll have a different conversation at that time. So it, he said yes, obviously. No one's going to say no to free labor. And um, my goal throughout that short time period, that six months, was, okay, I'm going to take as much of the minuscule, minute, time-consuming bullshit work off his desk so he can focus on what a CEO and president of a company needs to focus on, which is the 50,000 viewpoint of a company and be a visionary and I'll be the details guy and I'll be the person who just takes all of the time consuming things off of his plate, which I did. I, I took his emails, he doesn't take any emails. Um, at the end of the six months, he actually, he had, he had a friend that was like helping him out on some things uh, prior to me coming on. He said, no, you, you're out of here. So I got hired right away and um, I, moved, I moved up to vice president pretty quickly. Um, but so the first part of that is that, that fear part, right? What's the worst could, that could happen? Like, well, I, I'm, I have to work hard that I'm not getting paid for, but I still have my bartending thing on the weekend, and I still have my consulting thing uh, that I'm traveling forever for. Um, so I'll just be really tired. You know, that's the worst that could happen. And then the opportunity is, I mean, you're seeing it now, and I, I, I have total autonomy in my day-to-day -day activities and get to work on a broad spectrum of people all the way from community leaders and neighborhoods uh, to the deputy mayor, city council, um, state senators, U.S. senators, um, you, know, you name it. Uh, so the, the piece of that that I want to expand on is um, asking for a raise, right? So I'm already working for a company and feeling good. Um, like I said, it's a small company. I don't have scheduled performance reviews, right? I'm not an annual thing. I gotta ask for it. So there's a, there's a book that I, I read thinking about this process and wanting to do it strategically for my interest, but also to make him feel good about it at the same time. And um, it's a book that I encourage everyone to read it's called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. He's a former FBI hostage negotiator. And if you think about the title, Never Split the Difference, if you're a hostage negotiator, if you split the difference, the person's dead. So it doesn't work. So in, in negotiation, you are aiming for what you are intending to get, point blank, that's it. Um, every single time that I go into a negotiation for a raise or a negotiation for a deal, negotiation with a tenant or a bank or an investor, I always look back at this book. And you know, there's a few different types of personalities. You, know, you have assertive people, you have analytic people, and you have accommodator people. And, and there are also combinations of these throughout, but those are the three major traits that people have that if you identify them quickly, you can change your behavior to them so that they work with you in the way that you intend. So I, that's, that's definitely a book that I, and the one thing that if anyone you know, takes away from this is read that book and before you go into any major uh, conversation or decision, um, skim it, reread it, read it again, backwards then forwards again, and, and then try to hold on to and grasp you know, what type of person you're talking to and how do you need to change your speech patterns and approach to the conversation so that you get what you want in that situation. So that's really a, you know, a high level, couple stories, couple words of wisdom. Thank you.